Okay, is everybody seeing the splash screen? Okay, uh, yes, I'm Benjamin Connemal from uh, Capital Engineering at Parks Department. This is the reconstruction of Metropolitan Recreation Center sidewalk vault and sidewalk. It's $850,000 in mayoral funding. Uh, the goal is to replace the dilapidated 1987 sidewalk, especially on the Bedford Avenue side, to reconstruct some of the structure underneath it that needs to be handled and to, while we're doing that, improve the accessibility conditions, especially at the corner quadrant. It's the site is at the corner of Bedford and Metropolitan. Uh, I'm a constituent and I use this facility myself. It is not in a flood zone and the nearest Recreation Center is McCarran Park, which is about a 15 minute walk away. Uh, the current condition is dilapidated, as I said, especially on Bedford Avenue, where there is a uh, historic distinct, not historic, but a distinctive sidewalk from 1987. There is some additional deterioration on the Metropolitan Avenue side. Here are views of the Bedford Avenue side looking north on your left and south on your right, where you can see that 1987 um, patterning that is deteriorating and has deteriorated much more rapidly than the concrete around it. Here's the Metropolitan Avenue frontage looking east on the left and west on the right. Um, it's in much better condition, but it's still in need of reconstruction. And uh, we'll take an opportunity to widen the tree pit that you see in the right hand. It doesn't want to let me download WebEx for some reason, and I can't. This New Photograph. phone doesn't have a, a fuck. <clears throat> Sorry about that, Ben. No problem. Uh, and here we see the corner quadrant on the left hand side where the grades are a little steeper than the modern grades that DOT approves. And you can see that the pedestrian ramps are missing the contrast detectable warning surfaces that are now required. In the right-hand photograph, you can see that there's some unsightly staining on the granite of the ramp that we will take care of as we need to um, to make it look nice again. The reconstruction in plan looks like this. You can see uh, plain concrete uh, on both frontages of the building. All of the street furniture is to remain. In this case, it's the five bicycle uh, racks, excuse me, <clears throat> the five bicycle racks um, are to stay where they are. And uh, we're adding handrails at the main entrance, uh, which are missing and are recommended and required by the, our accessibility coordinator. And here's a rendering of what it'll look like in plain concrete. You can see that the staining is gone from the ramp. There are handrails on the main entrance and um, that's what it looks like. And that is it. That is it. Thank you. That was, we saw the presentation at the full board meeting. So we appreciate we appreciate you coming here tonight. It's my pleasure. Uh, any any board member have any questions at all? I do, Phil. Go ahead, Steve. I can't. I don't have a screen for your hands, so just okay. be, speak up. Uh, you know. Gotcha. Sounds good. Thank you, Phil, and uh, thanks for the presentation. And uh, I would say it looks looks really great. Really appreciate making you know uh, repairing pathway and making more accessible. Um, and um, disregard, yeah, the, the tree beds said they're expanding those. And like, if there's still like Belgian block down there, will you be removing those and creating a healthier environment for the trees? Yes, uh, it will be expanded to the typical size when we have this. Uh, this is an ample sidewalk on Metropolitan Avenue. Uh, the typical size is five feet by 10 feet, and it will mm -hmm. be have a plain concrete edge and no Belgian block. Sounds good. Thank you. Again, I don't have a screen with with anybody's hand up. So, if anyone got my hand up, Phil, up, go ahead. Yeah, it's Paul. Uh, yeah, thank you. It, you know, it seems pretty straightforward. I guess one question: Is there any opportunity to add any, uh, you know, benches or any sort of street furniture? I feel like parks; these kind of facilities are, you know, natural gathering places for people. Uh, we're not intending to add any. Additional street furniture. Um, this is the goals really. And it came out of the need to work on the structure underneath the sidewalk and then the condition of the sidewalk spoke for itself. Um, we, I don't object to um, the potentially adding 
furniture, but I will say that there is a limited time frame to achieve this, and we're coordinating with the borough to um, also move some equipment in to the pool filter area, and so we're we're hoping to achieve this without uh, additional time for design. If there was something like that that needed to go in, it would have to go back to um, internal review here at Parks Department. It would need to be designed. Um, and there, so that would have an effect on on our ability to achieve the project this year. Okay, maybe, maybe there's maybe later there'll yeah. be an opportunity. That's a nice idea. I will say that, I will say, sir, to address your question, there's nothing prohibiting adding, um, especially benches at any time later. They don't, they wouldn't require, um, you know, a reconstruction of any kind. You could just, if, if there was motivation to do that, it could be added in some later, later time all by itself. Ben, would you say that um, the, we, we didn't eliminate the possibility of adding benches, the current, the, the sidewalk that we're putting in could hold them? Absolutely. Yeah. So maybe we'll also we'll just bring it back to the team too to see if there's any option of adding it. But as Ben said, it's not going to detract from us putting that in in the future. So right. we'll take a look at it, Paul. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Good idea. Good idea. If everybody's good um, and you like it, and I'd like to add uh, Paul's recommendation, if if you would like to make a motion, someone on the on this uh, presentation. Yeah, Steve Chesser makes a motion to approve the um, the reconstruction of the sidewalk, and including the recommendation to add, for adding benches. Good idea. Good idea. Would someone like to second? Sure, I'll second. Thank you, Katie. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstentions. Thank you all. Motion passes. Mary will will present that at the full board meeting in May. Okay. So we present you. Know, so you'll uh, vote on it at the full board, right? We're not coming back. Wrong terminology. We'll come. We'll we'll, we'll uh, go go before the full board uh, with our motion and get a full board's. Uh... I appreciate it, Phil. Thank you. I just wanted to be sure. You got it. Well, thank the, you uh, very project much. Timeline. Uh, the project we're... timeline. <clears throat> yes, we're anticipating. We're hoping to get into construction this summer. It'll be toward, towards the end of the summer, but uh, that's the target. And how long will it take? W the full construction, we're anticipating a four month duration. Nice. Okay. Cool. The four months also includes work underneath. So yeah. it's not just the sidewalks. That's right. Um, just, well, since we're talking about benches uh, and it's included in the recommendation, can I ask, I'm assuming that the the recommendation or the request is to add benches on the Metropolitan Avenue side. And since we're still looking at these at the Metropolitan Avenue side in the screen share um, beyond we, they can't be in the foreground because, um, or they, they couldn't be in the foreground adjacent to the building because there is a, uh, a vault there. You can see covered by grading. So it would be in the distance. Uh, against the building beyond the bicycle racks. Okay. Is there a sense about that? What do you think, Paul? You were, you introduced it. I just think it's a nice it's a nice a nice idea. It's a nice addition. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about specifically where they would go. You you don't think the Bedford side? Uh, there's any opportunity there? I guess because you have the ramp and stuff. I I don't think there's and the steps because the steps create um, certainly not a fully accessible seat, but they. Those stadium st style steps essentially preclude uh, putting a bench in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would suggest specifically because I think you know in the previous image of Metro, you know, you know beyond the bike racks, it's kind of like getting down the block, so it's less associated with the entrance and the the actual facility. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you could just kind of look at it, study it a little bit, and and you know, maybe there's nothing there, but you know, maybe something will come to you. Uh, this is Mary O'Jamrick. Is that the block that has Martha's Bakery on the corner? It is. 
Okay, so that doesn't sound like a good idea for benches on that on on that particular block. First of all, it's very narrow as you're walking by the you know the Metropolitan Pool Club, mm -hmm. and I think that um, the bakery has benches and seating outside. Okay, it's it's a it's a thought. We'll just we can, we can always we'll just revisit it in the future. Uh, Let's move. Yeah. Phil, Phil, can I just suggest something? Because Paul and I sit on the transportation committee. Uh -huh. uh, you can get benches for transportation, but they're on the curve. So that's something to think about. If um, uh, another option. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay. And uh, thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you all. Welcome all back. Uh, we're going to move on. Uh, the second item on our agenda. Katie, I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, Katie is from North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. She's going to give us uh, her summer launch. No. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Phil. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, oh, rats. Um, You know what, Phil, I'm realizing I have to, um, I'm not able to share. Um, I, I forget what's on the agenda after me. Can I, uh, do you want to just go to the next item while I do that? You take, it, you take your time. Yeah. Cause, oh, that's great. Cause I know, I know the, the presenters are here. So we'll come back to you when, when you're, when you're ready. Uh, we're going to go to item number three, and uh, this is our, our, our pickleball um, presentation. Anna, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's roll. Let's roll. I like that. Okay. Go ahead. It's all yours. Okay, thanks. So first, I'm going to do some intros. I'm Anna Garwood and the founder of Williamsburg Pickleball, who I know William is familiar with. It's a community for pickleball players in Greenpoint and Williamsburg area. And I'm going to be giving a presentation, but I also want to introduce a couple other folks who are here to advocate for this as well. Um, we've got Samin Adwani, who is the director of business operations at 35 Ventures, also the GM of the Brooklyn Aces professional pickleball team. Uh, say hello, Samin. Hey everybody, <laughs> nice to meet you. And I uh, have Jose Mena as well, who's the director of strategic partnerships at 35 Ventures and the director of the Kevin Durant Family Foundation. So hello, Jose. Hello, Brooklyn. Great to meet y'all. All right. So I'm going to present a few slides, if that's all right with you guys. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can you all see this? Not yet. All right. Drum roll. Now you can see. No, we go ahead. Okay, great. All right. So, um, pickleball, as some of you may know, is the fastest growing sport in America, and we feel strongly that Brooklyn needs to get in the game, so to speak. So, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America for the third year in a row. And it's become the 3rd, most popular recreational activity after running and cycling. And so interest of the, for the sport has swelled throughout Brooklyn, but due to extremely limited public courts, the supply is really not meeting the demand. And so we're advocating for Brooklyn to have more space for pickleballers to play. So, I'm going to give it just an overview for those who aren't as familiar with the sport really quick. And could you tell us why it is that it is so fast and growing? Yes, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Yeah, hold your horses. Uh, so, um, so pickleball is just played on a court similar to tennis, but it's smaller surface area. And players use paddles instead of rackets and harder wiffle type balls instead of tennis balls. And it's the same size court, whether you're playing singles or doubles. It's kind of been such the week before. Uh, so why is the sport so appealing? The question that just popped up. Um, it spans generations. It was originally founded by three friends in 1965 for a sport that both uh, themselves and their friends and their kids could easily play, easily play all together. And it really rose in popularity among okay. the retirees who were, I think, yeah. someone is unmuted. Yourselves. 
in the Sorry, Adam, go ahead. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Um, it really originally got really popular amongst retirees for um, folks who used to play tennis, um, but they wanted something a little more easy to play in their older age. But uh, it really exploded in the past, uh, you know, three to five years, especially during COVID um, across all ages, especially millennials and younger folks as well, because it's accessible. It's easy to set up. It's easy to play. And it's also really fun and addicting. Um, you can ask William as well as the other folks here who, who play. It's super fun because it can also be played by many pe different people depending on, you know, across all different skill levels. So beginners can play, intermediate level players can play. And if you're really advanced, you can play as well. And it's really social. It builds community. Most people play doubles. And because of the smaller court size, you can easily chat with your fellow players while you're, you're playing a match. And a lot of people play in these um, open play sessions, which is a great way to meet new people, build community, get to know the people in your community, and create social capital. So just some stats. Um, in you know, in, in thirty-five or thirty-six point five million Americans played pickleball in the last year. That's a huge number. And um, fun fact: the highest percentage of those people who played in the past year live in New York City. Um, but we have the conundrum of having very small amount of pl places for people to play, which is kind of ironic. So we find out places to play. Um, and then this quote here from the CEO of Lifetime Fitness um, is, is saying that pickleball has everything it takes to be one of the biggest participatory sports in our country um, because of all those reasons I mentioned in the previous slide, because it's so accessible and very appealing to a wide swath of people. And in terms of the demographics, um, as I mentioned, it originally started in, uh, amongst the older set of, of players, um, but those only make up about 30% of the players who play now um, that are 55 plus. 49% are between 18 to 54, and 21% are kids between 6 to 17. So it really, truly does span generations and is a really fun, active social way for people um, to get out there and play. And I just want to give an overview of the North Brooklyn pickleball community, which I'm a part of, William is a part of. And we did a survey a few months ago to understand why people play pickleball, why it's appealing to them. And so this word cloud kind of um, brings forth uh, the sentiments that most people mentioned in the survey uh, to create friends. It's thrilling. It's addicting, competitive. It's easy uh, to pick up and play. It's active. It builds community, it's fun, and it's social. So as you can see, these themes keep coming across in terms of why people play. And uh, this is a snapshot on some of the uh, several communities that have been built around pickleball in the area. Um, this is the one that I manage, the Williamsburg pickleball one here. And uh, these communities have really pretty large size followings and really engaged members. Um, like if I put a post out on on my Instagram or put a story out, um, it has really strong engagement, especially for open plays or anything about pickleball that I that I put out there to the community. Um, and then this is a resource guide. There's a website that I see pickleball created, and it updates places to play in the area. But um, the vast majority of quote unquote courts that are listed on the site and labeled BYON, bring your own net. As you can see, the image in their homepage is um, you know, just a surface that they created to be able to play pickleball, but these are not official courts. And so um, we're advocating to get more courts built, more official pickleball courts. Um, the population of Brooklyn is over 2.5 million residents, but there's only three public co public courts in the borough that have pickleball courts. Um, and none of these courts are in North Brooklyn. So you can see all of these three here. These are the three courts or the three parks in Brooklyn. They're all sort of below Prospect Park. So there's none in the North Brooklyn area, but there's a huge demand um, for them. And so we've identified some prospective locations in our area that we think would be ideally suited to build courts. Um, one of them being McCarran Park. Um, this area, this asphalt surface area that's between uh, 12th and 13th Street, um, between Bedford and Barrie. 
This is where the majority of the pickleball players in our community play. Um, you're probably familiar with this this area. It's it's called a field, but it's asphalt, and um, I think you can only get it permitted for uh, for kickball and softball right now. But this is where most of the pickleballers are playing. However, this is the status of that surface area. Um, it looks like a bunch of vines growing on asphalt, as you can see. It's uh, pretty torn up. Um, not in a great condition for any sport, really. And on any given nice day, there's up to like 10 to 15 makeshift courts of pickleballers out there really eager to play the sport. So we're suggesting, I don't know if there's any um, plans allocated for that space, but I, I think you can comfortably fit six to eight courts while also um, reserving at least half of that space for other resurfacing other sports to be played on it. So we're, we're proposing six to eight courts can easily fit there, even more if, if we wanted. And then um, Bushwick Inlet Park. Um, this is the area between North 12th and North 14th here along Kent Avenue. Um, it's a desolate area uh, that could be prime for pickleball courts. This is what it currently looks like. Uh, you're probably familiar with this area as well. And uh, we think that you know you could easily fit between ten to six to ten courts, um, even more if there was a desire. And then lastly, um, Erickson Playground is another location that we're proposing would be prime for pickleball courts. Uh, right now, it's got these two basketball courts um, that are pretty underutilized, as well as these empty asphalt surface areas um, that are that are definitely underutilized. Um, the only folks that I ever see out there using this area on a regular basis is like a makeshift volleyball um, pickup league. But other than that, I, I don't really see a, um, a lot of use for this area. So we think that we could fit two to four courts here at Erickson. So now I'm going to hand it over to Samin and Jose and just actually I have one more slide um, and then I'll hand it over to them. But this is a visual uh, just to show you if you were to convert existing courts, how many pickleball courts you could fit on here on the left, this is a basketball court. You could fit three in that same size. And then over here on the right is a tennis court. You can fit four pickleball courts in the same size as a tennis court. So they don't take up as much space. So you can either convert existing courts into pickleball courts or you could um, you know, maximize under, underutilized park areas to build courts like those empty asphalt um, images I showed. So I'll hand it over to uh, Samin and Jose to talk about some potential funding. Uh, Samin, I think you might be muted. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, thanks, Anna, and great to meet everyone. Um, she, I also should have mentioned in my intro, I'm actually a, a member of the Brooklyn One community as well. I live um, in Williamsburg, so this is near and dear to my heart. Um, but just for reference, um, Jose and I both work um, under Kevin Durant's um, business and foundation, and recently we um, invested and are now the operators and owners of Brooklyn's first major league pickleball team um, called the Brooklyn Aces. And so for us, this is really exciting just because we've seen kind of similar success in the basketball space, kind of bringing basketball to underserved communities. And we feel like there's a real opportunity to do this with pickleball as well. And for us, it's a huge, huge focus of our team. Um, I'll quickly pass it to Jose just to kind of touch on some of the work that he's done with the foundation in the basketball world as well. Thanks to me and great to meet everyone. Uh, I'm not a Brooklynite, but um, you know, super excited to be involved in this kind of work with the Brooklyn Aces. Uh, my background, as Anna mentioned, uh, aside from the strategic partnerships work that I do with, with some of our sports partners, is really uh, community grounded through the Durant Family Foundation. Uh, we've done a lot of work in New York City and in Brooklyn, um, partnering with this incredible organization called the Trust for Public Land, which um, has similar has a similar mission to New York City Parks, and that's to bring a, a you know f incredible park space within five minute walking distance of every American. And obviously, and I've supported projects through the foundation in New York City, um, PS three fifteen in Brooklyn. Uh, in the Lower East Side on uh, 12th Street and Avenue A um, in the Bronx. Here's a couple images of, of some of the more, most recent projects. We've completed uh, 28 uh, projects across the world in, I think, uh, eight years. 
um, and you know, recently have really put in uh, artist, awesome artistic murals to make these play spaces incredible. And that's 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 the angle we want to bring to the pickleball world is really make it a fun, beautiful space, um, just to uh, make play accessible to everyone. Pickleball especially is it bridges generations, it bridges you know uh, different perspectives, and it brings people together. And I think we need that more than ever. So I'll leave it at that, um, and uh, we'll kick it back to Anna. Well, that pretty much wrapped up <laughs> our presentation. So, um, you know, I guess I'll stop sharing or I can ask uh, field any questions people have if, if there was any parts of the presentation you want me to bounce back to. Yeah, Jan, I'll, once I, I just want to thank you very much, Anna. I, I want to apologize. I'm sorry. I know you've been wanting to do this for the longest time. <laughs> if you get a chance, I've, I've got, a, I, I know your, your, your email is pickleball. Uh, Williamsburg pickleball at Gmail. Yes. I tried going through and I, I keep it keeps kicking back at me. It keeps. Oh, so, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's going on there. If you get a chance, just uh, add some uh, extra uh, contact information at at the board, and they'll okay. they'll forward it to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll I'll throw my other email address, my other Gmail, uh, in there. Jan has a hand up. Jan would like to ask you a question. Yeah. One is is that. Uh, um, I, I mean, could I play pickleball? I think the question is, I turned 82 yesterday. Can I play pickleball? And I'm a little concerned that you, they started out with seniors and my son roared when I said I was going to play pickleball the other night. So I would like to put myself out there maybe as a challenge about is pickleball really for everybody? Uh, so I want to know if I could play and. I think that I, uh, I mean, I, th I see, I'm at state, I often am at state college too in Pennsylvania and a lot of people are playing pickleball and they are seniors, but they're largely probably in their fifties and sixties. They're not in their seventies and eighties. And I want to know if you've tried to work with, so my one question is, can I play? Uh, Cause second is, can they, have you tried to work with the senior centers? Cause I said, Phil is the head of, Consulate Street Swinging 60s. We have uh, uh, on our board, we have people from uh, the in the Polish community, huge. We have uh, Young at Heart in the North Side. I'm just suggesting that the, and I know you're all, you're all volunteers, right? None of you are paid uh, employees. So I'm chalking as if you can run around and do this all. You may not be able to, but you have all the senior centers and some of them have space around their centers too. Uh, that's one. And of course, the other place that has space is public housing has space and public housing people. And I'm just saying, if we really are serious about trying to be diverse, I mean, I know Cooper Park has space and, and Williamsburg Houses has space. I do, do think that it's worthwhile to, to look at it, maybe ask the community board people that work in these places to help because I don't see why you should have to do all this work. So I want to say that I really apologize for adding more burdens on something wonderful that you're trying to do for the community. Uh, so age, space, and where these places are, because every place you showed, they're largely toward the Greenpoint area. And I'm a little uh, uh, concerned that we are, um, Put it, and I'm glad Greenpoint is there. I've lived in Greenpoint, but we've really got to get Williamsburg in there. And I just gave you several ideas about where there is space and that people might be interested. And it might be worthwhile at least one committee community meeting where you invite the public housing leaders and and talk to them because you have a lot of athletes in all these public housing places and people want to keep people very active. You have a lot of people that are have coming out of COVID that need to get out. So seniors are one of the groups that need to come out, but a lot of people that stayed in public housing and other places need to come out. So those are my two uh, questions and I'm very willing to help if you wanna move in that direction. Great. I'm on the public housing and housing committee of community board one, as well as the women's committee. And I'm concerned about women cause I didn't hear that word. And I'm on a mania as uh, 82, that people somehow have a great deal of difficulty mentioning the fact 
there are a lot of constituents. One of the constituents are women. And I see that you have women, but if they're all uh, um, gentified, you know, women from Greenpoint and we're not getting any women from the other areas, mm -hmm. I would be concerned about that because I still see the parks in Williamsburg where women are sitting and watching the men play everything. So, and I can be wrong because I'm not around all the time and I'm willing to be told I'm wrong. Thank you. Um, but Phil, may I speak? Um, and, uh, ahead, wait, Anna? Because um, uh, one group that was enlisted was McCarran, uh, McCarran's Park Hawks. Uh, we have 100 members and um, and uh, Jan, we, hello? I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm here. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, I have, we have a 92 young uh, woman, Florence, who's going to be playing her first tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my members are um, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I, I myself is 68. And we do have 20 year olds in a sense. So it is a mix. I did speak with Deborah Bender about uh, setting up a pickleball court in their space, and we're going to continue the conversation when the weather gets warm. But, uh, you know, there are other groups, and we all already started that conversation. But I assure you, uh, in fact, Florence is so good, I expect her to win her tournament and within a year be ranked number one in her age group. Thank you. I didn't hear you tell me if I could play. Uh, Hell yeah. I didn't hear that word at all. Absolutely, you can play. Yes. <laughs> Any other any I, again, I don't see I don't have the screen with with with, with hands. No, my hand is raised. Talk and ask a question to Anna. Yeah, my hand is raised. Yeah, I can't see. Go ahead, Katie. Please speak up. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, Jan, I love that idea about looking at at uh, NYCHA properties. Um, and William, that's that's awesome. If you're already talking to the folks over at Cooper, um, uh, because in part, um, some of the um, Parks that you mentioned uh, either have designs um, that have been approved by the community board, uh, like Erickson um, has a design that was approved by the community board that didn't include pickleball courts or, you know, the slide at the moment um, has a master plan, although that particular plot of land um, hasn't been designed um, specifically, um, but there is a master plan um, that's already been in place for a number of years for Bush Rick Inlet Park. And then you may or may not be aware that um, the McCarran lot has, um, it was announced that they are going to be building a dog run there, at least funding to build a dog run there um, has been uh, in the news um, and part of the dialogue about that space. Um, but, uh, I don't know what the status is of that. Um, but some of, some of the spaces that you mentioned, um, do actually have, have plans. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I would take a look at, at, uh, the designs. Uh, I think, especially the ones that are approved would be on the city parks website. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. And this is really like, um, suggested locations, not knowing the full, you know, plans that are in the works, but also just to present the need and the demand um, and how it can, you know, serve the community. If there's other locations that would be possible, we're open to that as well, obviously. And I just want to jump in because me and William were talking the morning and um, I could tell you when we started to redes come to redesign a lot of our parks area a couple of years ago, we had to start putting dog runs in because that became very popular at the time. Now it's almost mm -hmm. standard everywhere. So me and William said, I think as we move forward and we start to see new designs coming into our existing parks, we're going to have to uh, look to put pickleball courts in these in these new designs that we're going to put together. Yeah. I love the sound of that, yeah. Phil. Yeah. That's what we're going to have to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Bill, can I um, go ahead, Steve? Yeah, related to that, you know, Box Street Park, mm -hmm. which is, um, you yeah. know, a park in progress. And, there, you know, it's designed for, I guess, like two and a half out of three acres. Right. But the the final section where the emergency response unit someday, <laughs> uh, they'll they'll vacate that spot and it'll be available. So, I mean, that's potential spot for that. You know, it's kind of a long haul, but. Unfortunately, Bushel Park Long Hall too, because um, the remediation situation is complicated and, and intense, and there's they're just working that out right now. And um, then, as you know, as uh, Katie mentioned, there's a waterfront open space master plan that suggested 
um, active uses of the park kind of be in kind of one half and passive be on the other half. And, um, but, you know, in the end, it's up to the you know community to design their park. So. Yeah, but I, like I said, I think moving forward, we're going to have to start looking for space and we're going to have to spot. It's just become too popular of a sport right now. Too many people are playing it. We got too many requests for it. So I think we're going to have to start looking at, at our design. Now, where could we, where can we put courts? All over, all over, all over our, our community. What about under like a meeker under the, you know, the yeah. uh, BQE? Maybe yeah. that you're right about that. That's and right. Sternberg Park. Hi, um, oh, hi, Jane. Go ahead, Jan. Jane, Jane. Oh, hi. Um, I love pickleball, and um, but uh, Katie, Denny Horowitz, do you think under the K Bridge because people can set up and tear down? I mean, it's a seven or eight acre paved park that might be doable um yeah, but i we... also hmm? oh sorry finish oh um but i also wanted to say that um to jose um in terms of the building of uh basketball courts in our community at the NYCHA housing um the cooper park houses there was a man named torian spears who mentored uh youth through uh basketball Mm -hmm. um, in Cooper Park and their courts and, and he died sadly of a heart attack, very young. And there's an annual, um, tournament in his honor every year. And the people who live in the Cooper Park houses are always looking to honor him. They, they would love to restore the courts, but they need help. And, uh, is this something we could set up a meeting with, uh, the Kevin Durant at the, um, foundation possibly? Well, the meeting would be with me, Jane. Um, okay. I'd be happy to learn more about what the parks are. Our, you know, our, our renovation program with basketball is um, because we've done so many in New York, and and our promise is to like take it global. It is, you know, it is a process to get um, projects approved, but it's always nice to have a, a lay of the land in terms of where the need is, and you know, some of these special storylines obviously are, are add to the compelling nature of, of yeah. the renovation. So, um, you know, I guess I, I'm sure my contact email is part of this agenda. So yeah, we, great. We can figure something out. Yay. Thank you. I'll I reach just, out. Yeah. Jane, if I could just jump in there. Um, we actually have funded the, the frost playground. So those are the courts for Torian Spears. We funded those and we're supposed to start this spring. I don't have a start date yet. It's in my update that I provide to the board every month. But um, we will be redoing those those basketball courts and the handball court that's directly adjacent to it. Oh, that's great news too. That yeah, is so really that, great. But I'm sure we can redirect Jose to to some other <laughs> courts. Some other there's plenty <laughs> plenty of need here in Brooklyn. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jose, I'll reach out anyway because maybe you'll uh, yeah we'll get you involved in some park related things. Very good. Love it. Phil, I just want to answer Jane's question quickly. Um, yeah, we had thrown out the idea of under the K and, and, and reached out to some active pickleball players, but it was my understanding that I think because of the frequency that they go that that, although it might be a good place physically, I think it was just a little too far. Is that right? William. Correct. Oh, yeah, correct. I spoke to, um, and I also spoke to Anna about this. Uh, most of the folks I spoke to weren't too happy with our location. Um, and also. To be honest, a lot of people don't like to cross Baker Avenue. Um, to be honest, we, um, okay. but that was the one of the places that they were interested in. Like I said, we'll we'll keep we'll keep an eye out. Now we, we just wherever we can put them, we'll just keep looking. Um, Bill, can I ask something? Oh, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, just kind of a technical question because I I've never played pickleball. But is the surface something special, or is can it just be asphalt? Well, we make do with asphalt because we don't have real courts, but it's very similar to a tennis court surface if you're if you're playing on a real court. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking about possibilities for sort of like multi-purpose spaces. Because I know, William, you said you've been teaching lessons in handball courts, right? Which is just... Yeah, uh, and it's it's been on... Um, and I want to talk about that a bit later because uh, drawing the sharks on the ground at my 68 years of age has been... So I've been teaching Cub Scouts and fellow seniors like Florence 
to get them ready for a tournament at the handball courts at uh, Cooper Park. Uh, and it's, you know, it's concrete, it's hard, it would be nice. So one of the things I've done is with uh, plastic markers, put them on the two tennis courts during the week when it's empty, because the surface is much more easier on an, our knees. Uh, as you know, if you've played any sport, the knees are the first to go. But one of the things I wanted to ask later is the possibility of drawing uh, pickleball lines within uh, tennis courts. That's something I want to bring up a little later. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, and the last thing I was just going to ask Phil, I guess, to you and the group is, I know New York City has an adoptive parks program as well. Um, you know, to the extent that's something that we could also funnel through with the Durant Family Foundation and sort of adopt the park and refurbish it um, with us providing some of the funding. I think we'd be really excited and open to that as well. That was a good idea. Very good idea. Sure. Phil, I'm with the parks on? department too. So Simon and, and I'd love to talk to you guys about. Mm -hmm. um, just McCarran Park where you're playing now and adopt a park program and what we can do. So yeah. um, I don't know if That's you, great. If, Joanna, if you can connect us, um, but we can have a conversation about the adopt a park and um, just McCarran and, and all of that. Yeah, I think it provides a great framework where it's, you know, yeah. we can do the work and, and, and sort of support the community. Good. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little complicated and depending, you know, and where you look and where you go, but it's it's definitely an option that we have. William, would you like to put a motion on the floor? A committee member, so I can put a motion. Oh, you're not. A, I'm sorry. I'm a board member, and I'm. You're a board member. You're not. I. 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 I you know when you talk. Ah, you see me so I often. I go to you. You know that. <laughs> um, I love you, brother. Steve, would you like to so put I, a motion on the floor, Stephen? Yeah, sure. If I could just make one more quick suggestion. Sure, go ahead. Marsha P. Johnson, Marsha P. Johnson State Park. Where Smorgasbord right. um, only uses that slab 24 days out of the year. The remaining 300 plus days are not, yeah. it's not utilized. Beautiful. I, I'd say aggressively. I um, use it for pickleball, Steve. It's interesting you say that. I was talking to Leslie Wright about this and she said people yeah. are using it for pickleball. Wow. And she but thinks I, it's a great use of it because it's, we, you know. We send a letter to state oh, on we that. tried to reach out, we couldn't. To state okay, so. That. But let's, let's stay with this right now, Steve. All right, so. so with something along the lines of um, requesting that uh, the Parks Department actively pursue potential locations for um, creating pickleball courts within our district. Is that, some, is, that, um, is that kind of what we're going for here, or do you want something a little more in depth or? I think, you know, that's, 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 the, that's what we're, the idea we're trying to put across. We'll send that to uh, to the, to the, to the parks, park heads and North we, really, we're talking just us with, you know, North Brooklyn. Uh, but that's what I think we're, we're, we're looking for right here. So would someone like to 2nd that motion? Well, actually, Phil, could I, or Steve, could I make a friendly amendment to that? Yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if, you know, Steve, you mentioned under, under the BQE also, and there's all this discussion about, you know, repurposing that space. Should we also make that request to. DOT, um, since they're responsible for that space, that was, we sort of expand it beyond parks and think well, a little we more. Do about that. We could add, we could put to, as you could say, send things to DOT for for open for space that's not being utilized right now. Yeah, sure. And to the housing sure. authority for the uh, for the public housing that's within the Williamsburg area. And with, you could, we could put we could send a letter to public to to to, to housing also and right. and. and, and so, in and Leslie Wright, State Parks. State Parks, without a doubt, her too. Okay. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, we have a. That's good. We covered covered a lot of territory with that. Okay. A great idea. Um. So so what, Steve, uh, Paul, would you like to second that motion? I would like to second it. Yes. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Abstentions. Motion passes. And we do have a quorum, which I thank everyone for. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, Appreciate thank the you opportunity. So much. To present. Great presentation, all of you. I love that. That was wonderful. Thank, thank you, you so much. Hi, Katie. Are we ready to go? Yes, I think so. Okay. I think so. Let me give this a try. All right, give it a try. <laughs> What do you see? Oh, there you go. We right got it. There. 
All right, great. So um, I know you all are champing at the bit to to know what New Yorkers, uh, what North Brooklyn Park Science is up to, but I wanted to spend a quick um, moment kind of talking about um, uh, the Parks Department's uh, budget, or at least the city budget uh, that's happening right now, um, and kind of where the parks uh, funding is. Um, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance has for many years been part of the Play Fair Coalition. Um, which is an, uh, an initiative by New Yorkers for Parks, a more than 100-year-old citywide advocacy organization. Um, uh, full disclosure, I used to work there probably more than a decade ago, um, and it advocates for uh, improvements of parks across the city. And so in um, thinking about the city's budget and also you know, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance and other um, volunteer groups, other parks conservancies across the city. Part of the reason why we exist is because there just isn't enough funding going into the city's budget for parks. Um, so just very quickly, um, the Playfair Coalition is um, uh, advocating that 1%, at least 1% of the city's budget does support uh, the parks department's budget. Um, this coalition is more than 400 organizations across the city. Um, this represents um, unions, uh, elected officials, parks conservancies, friends groups, um, volunteer coalitions uh, that want more funding for parks. Um, this is just a really quick timeline of the parks department's budget. Um, back from back in the 60s when it was more than 1%. Um, we'll go in staff numbers in a second, um, but you can see that during the fiscal crisis of the 70s, um, it, it steeped down uh, more than 1% and slowly but surely over the 50 years since, it has been creeping up and to this day is still only about a half a percent of the city's budget. Um, and as it, this is kind of represents um, the, that growth um, since the, the 70s fiscal crisis um, of the Parks Department's budget compared to other agencies. Um, and you can see that it's one of the slowest growth agencies. Um, and this is a comparison of kind of where New York is compared to other cities, um, comparing the amount of funding per park acreage. And you can see that New York City's um, share of uh, its overall resources compared to its city acreage is quite low um, compared to um, other major cities, um, and that really is like who, who, who is working in parks, right? And so this again is just kind of a graphic visual of um, uh, the size of the workforce working in our parks um, for the city um, over the last um, you know eighty years. Um, and so you can see while it's been getting increased in the last you know five years or so, um, it's still woefully below where it was before the fiscal crisis of the seventies which is why the there's a campaign right now um, and uh, you know the the this coalition has secured um, additional funding um, over the last few years and when you say additional funding that usually means people um, so positions um, a baseline position that's something that is um, secured a position that's secured in the budget um, you've got maintenance and operations um, uh, PEP, police, uh, 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 parks enforcement police, you have uh, recreation folks. And so those are sort of um, positions that um, are, are kind of on the chopping block right now that through advocacy, you're actually able to restore those positions, uh, which has been successful in the past. Um, these are just examples of the amount of money uh, that was secured through advocacy last fiscal year, um, and they're on the chopping block for this fiscal year. Can you just hold on one second? Um, and so without that securing that funding from year to year, it's possible that you have less services. Um, and so we're sort of encouraging you all, since you are the Parks Committee and since you are, uh, you know, park... Um, uh, you have an interest in parks, obviously, because you're here. Uh, we're just encouraging people to uh, hold on one second. I'm in the middle of a presentation. Um, we're encouraging you all to sign the petition to bring the city's um, budget back up to. And when I say the city, I mean telling the mayor and telling your city council members that you want the budget to increase for the parks department. Um, and so this is the request of the coalition. Um, those are the positions. Um, that is part of the um, uh, of the ask 
Um, this would be citywide as well as um, overall initiatives like parks equity um, and natural areas initiatives. Um, and so that's kind of a very, very high level overview. Anyone who's interested, feel free to um, feel free to email me. Um, I'd love to get you involved in either the coalition or the um, or the um, petition and campaign. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, or I would just go into uh, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. Uh, Jan has a question. Hey, Jan, what's up? It's uh, it's. I, I um, have been fighting for parks for a long time, but my question would be, and I don't expect a big answer now, but I think it's really important that that we relook at what is the partnership between public and public space and parks because of the issue that is exemplified by Women's Swim, where the Parks Department is not letting the community carry out what the entire community board, all the local politicians have asked them to do because they say they actually get to decide everything regarding the pool. It worries me uh, and I would like to have some time on an agenda, not now, because you're already long into the meeting, a discussion about what is the partner, what is the relationship between the community that uses the park, the users, and the and the parks department because i am really concerned that it is not public and that the public doesn't have any power and voice so i just want to put it on the agenda but for later phil to, yeah, okay. this needs sure. is really because other places we have we have partnerships and we know what they are i don't know what ours is anymore with the parks department So, um, yeah, and again, like the Steve has something to ask you. Yeah, I just, well, I just like to react to what Jan said. Um, Jan, I, I don't know, I guess I've had a different experience with the uh, parks department, especially with Mary and Vinny and, and Commissioner Marr, um, especially with park design that, you know, this board and the community has had a huge impact yes, on I know, recent park designs. And you know, the friends groups have close symbiotic relationship with uh, with Mary, you know, if there are issues in the park, um, you know, and I, you know, I feel like, you know, the women's swim has been you know, a very contentious issue. I feel like, you know, we're, we've, you know, it's been it's back and forth trying to right get. Now. We have, that's, that's good. We're going to, we're going to talk about. Yeah, but she was relating it to. I don't want to stop you know, the conversation now. Let's okay, stay I on point you. now okay. and then we'll get there in a minute. Okay. So I think All we right. need to talk, Steve. We need a meeting okay. on okay. this idea. Yeah. Hold on. One thing at a time, please. Not Go now. On. Not now. Yeah. One thing at a time. So um, so it was really, you know, the campaign's really about the 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 uh allocations and especially the workforce going into um maintaining um and providing horticultural services for park spaces, right? Um and so uh with that, um if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen again, and I want to talk about um, some of the things that we are the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance is doing um, to help support uh, the parks efforts, um, but then also how we're looking um, beyond just park spaces and really looking at open spaces across the district, uh, whether it's the parks department or the Department of Transportation on the city or or the state side. Um, and so with that, I'd love to talk to you about what we are up to. Uh, and so uh, you said summer, I think that's because I said a summer season, um, but I actually wanna focus on the spring because we're barely into spring. Um, so these are some of the things that we're gonna be uh, talking about over the next couple of minutes. Um, in particular, I'm really excited to share um, that we have been growing our staff in order to provide uh, those services. Um, on the administrative side, we're building up our communications and our finance. Um, we're building a horticultural team, um, a maintenance team. Most of them are local um, and uh, they're pretty diverse in terms of um, uh, their uh, demographics, age, ethnicity, um, but except for where they live, because most of them live uh, in the neighborhood or, or nearby, certainly in Brooklyn. Um, we still have two open positions. Um, 
One is actually three. One is the lead um, operations for Under the K, uh, always looking for new um, uh, uh, grounds crew at Under the K. And then um, my one of my favorite positions, uh, which is the lead gardener at McGoric Park, um, is still open. Um, so we are looking for that. If anybody knows someone who uh, is interested in the gorgeous park we call McGoric. Um, we are looking for a gardener on partnership with uh, city parks uh, to be able to um, service that park. Um, we focus a lot of our attention on under the K. For those of you who don't know, we were talking about this before as it relates to pickleball. Um, but under the K Bridge Park is a relatively new seven acre park under the Cushu Scoop Bridge. Um, it's mostly a linear park, um, and we have really been focusing on its uh, horticultural improvements. Um, those improvements and investments are happening in large part because of um, collaborations and partnerships that we've been building. Um, this is all under the lead of our new director of horticulture, Lisa Bloodgood, um, who many of you know because she's a, a, a strong community member for more than a decade. Um, but we have been partnering with an organization called the HOPE program. Uh, it's a Bronx-based program that uh, trains uh, uh, folks from all over the city in horticulture and equipment. Um, and so some of our um, new gardeners are from that program. Uh, we've been working with uh, the local Girl Scouts for the last, I don't know, seven, eight months on a, on a um, sunflower garden um, under the bridge, uh, which is that kind of oval uh, next to the blue wall on the top center. Um, we've been partnering with uh, Greenbelt Native Plant Center. We have um, uh, a seed program and a sort of dedicated team following the seed program so that we can have this kind of circular um, uh, partnership where we are growing um, plants on their behalf. We're collecting the seeds, giving them back to them so that they can grow more plants and we can continue trading. Um, so we're just getting started on a three-year um, partnership for that. Um, we're partnering with Big Reuse, uh, which many of you know as kind of like the compost kings, right? They have a couple of locations in New York. Um, most close is, I think, uh, under the Queensboro Bridge, um, and they have been delivering tons of compost all over the neighborhood, um, and they're going to be keeping a lot of that at under the K Bridge Park so that we can service local um, open spaces in the neighborhood uh, with fresh compost uh, that is collected locally. Um, we also built a nursery, um, a natives plant nursery with um, almost 15,000 plants uh, that right now are little tiny baby plants. Um, but by this fall, we're hoping that we'll have more than 10,000 plants that can service, uh, again, the parks and open spaces throughout the neighborhood. And uh, we've been focusing a lot on soil. Um, I think a lot of you know that the soil in this neighborhood um, has had some issues because of the environmental history that we all kind of, I think, are aware of. Um, so we've been partnering with the Clean Soil Bank to get cleaner soil um, uh, at, under the K Bridge and using that in other spaces as needed. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, uh, testing the soil on a frequent basis, um, partnering with Brooklyn College and their soil lab to do so. Um, we've been doing a lot of volunteering. Um, just the last couple of days, uh, we did a couple in Bushwick Inlet Park um, with uh, CBRE and North Brooklyn Runners um, and uh, the Williamsburg High School of Architecture and Design. These are It's My Park Days, kind of building off the work that the Friends of Bushwick in the Park does. Um, there's always a lot of work to do, so we're just trying to help their efforts. Um, that was part of uh, the beginning of Earth Day, so we were out and about this past weekend um, where we were either organizing or supporting events um, all over the district. Um, we had three parks that we worked in, um, Bushwick Inlet Park, Cooper Park, McGullard Park, um, as well as open streets that we're involved in, um, and those activities were um, uh, performances, volunteer events, uh, plantings, uh, uh, community sort of tabling, um, and it was just a, really such a wonderful weekend if anyone was out for Earth Day. And I think some of you know, we've been uh, working with city parks and council member wrestler and an organization called tree time on uh, the council members uh, street tree fund, uh, which, uh, yeah, I see Vanessa here. Um, and so.
initiative has been happening for Jeepers, I feel like six, the last six months, um, but we've done a couple of events with the council member recently. So this past weekend, um, we got uh, a number of volunteers to service uh, street trees on a mile, uh, on the mile stretch along Kent Avenue from North 12th to Metropolitan, again, with, you know, big reuse um, and their compost. Um, and we are part of the Forest for All Coalition, uh, which is working on getting more trees and better street tree care uh, throughout the entire city. Um, we are working um, with the Friends of McGulrick. Um, I think anyone who has visited McGulrick recently has uh, seen the, the wonderful state that it's in, right? The Parks Department has been um, doing making great efforts in getting it ready for spring. It's looking gorgeous. Um, the Friends of McGlorick Park is a relatively new organization, relatively new friends group that has uh, been um, just really fabulous to work with. Um, if anyone was there, the Attorney General was there this past weekend announcing funding to the Greenpoint Library, um, but then also it created an opportunity to thank her for the investments that the Attorney General made through GSEF in the McGlorick Park over the last um, you know, maybe eight years, um, uh, and, um, you know, they've expressed interest in continuing to support the park. And I want to plug again, my, our, um, our lead gardener position, uh, which again, would be a partnership with New York city parks. Um, it's something that's also funded by city council member, uh, wrestler, um, to be able to have a dedicated gardener in this park. Um, and I wanted to also give a shout out to the council member for funding the, the picnic tables on the right hand side, which we were able to bring over and install last week. Um, Cooper Park, I know some of our friends are here. We had a fabulous weekend this past weekend uh, with the friends of Cooper Park. Um, City Parks has been helping um, with the pollinator garden on the left. Can you give me one second? Um, and so we were helping uh, their efforts this past weekend to expand their pollinator garden, um, which is being led by Paul and William, who's on here. And then, of course, Sarah um, and council member, give me a second, council member uh, Jen Gutierrez. And so moving away from Parkland, um, I wanted to talk quickly about uh, our work in open streets and plazas. If you could just give me one moment. Please. Where is it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to find. I can't find. I can't find it while I'm here. Hold on. Okay, so um, uh, many of you may have seen that you know the Open Streets 2023 season is upon us. Um, there has been a, an expansion to Open Streets, and uh, what we have been working on with city DOT um, has really been three projects. Um, we've been working with them um, on the Bedford slip, which is Bedford Avenue, um, just off of Manhattan um, on bankers anchor, which is uh, the little triangle um, off of on North 15th street, uh, right across from McCarran um, and then Barry street, uh, which many of, you know, as an, as a long open street. Um, and so. These are all in partnership with uh, volunteer coalitions for each of those spaces uh, that have been gathering and doing a lot of advocacy over the last few years. Um, in North Brooklyn, that expansion isn't necessarily more spaces, but rather more resources to the spaces we've been working on. So this, uh, I, this not this past weekend, yesterday and the day before, we have been um, doing horticultural investments in Bedford Slip uh, to try to activate that and, and make it more green um, and make it a more successful plaza space. Bankers Anchor, again, which is on North 15th, is going to move from a weekend open street to one that's going to be available 24-7 as an actual plaza space. So you're going to be seeing some improvements there. Um, anyone who's been to the transportation committees will have seen those designs because DOT has been uh, presenting them for Bankers Anchor as well as Berry Street. And so um, we have been uh, working with local businesses to try to get sponsorships of some of these programs. So you should see more activities in these spaces um, in the uh, month to come. Uh, so, and I think, uh, you know, we've 
so many folks have talked about these two issues, but I just wanted to, you know, reiterate that, um, you know, uh, we uh, responded to the um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers um, proposal to um, um, protect the waterfront, which included sea gates and walls. And so um, that's something that we had been working on this winter, um, as well as uh, working on the BQE. So, you know, I'm pretty sure, well, I forget, was it you, Paul? I already forgot. Um, whoever brought up uh, pickleball under the, under the BQE, I'm fairly certain that came up in three of the visioning sessions that we put together um, over the last two months um, and collected all of that feedback and provided it to DOT um, in a report, uh, which I'm happy to provide to this committee um, because it included, um, you know, a fair amount of um, community feedback on how we can reimagine the expressway, um, including green infrastructure projects and park developments um, in, along, around, on top, and under the BQE. Um, and so that's kind of it for now. Um, I don't have anything, I think, to vote on, but I just wanted to make sure that you all knew what we were up to um, as we get started in 2023. Thank you very much. There was a lot there. Thank you so much for that, Katie. Any questions for Katie? Uh, uh, Phil, I just want to say thank you to Katie and uh, all of Brook North Brooklyn Parcel Lines. They always come there when we call out for help. So we appreciate them with all our heart. Very good. Very good. Katie, would you, but would you like to make a motion that I, I like your idea about the 1%? So maybe we could send a letter to. I would love to make a motion for the community board to. Um, to uh, I, would, I would say to 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 who to city hall and to our our council people. Uh yeah, I think that's exactly right. So if you'd like to make a motion on that, that we will that we're, we're advocating that the city budget should be for one percent should go to parks budgets. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Second it, Steve. Oh, Chester. excellent, Steve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions. Abstentions. Motion passes. I'm yeah. abstaining. This is oh. Mary. I, I'm abstaining. Okay, Mary. I've got your abstention. I got you. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Good. Very good. Very very good. Okay. And we're going to move on to our last and final agenda item. This is the discussion on adding hours to the women's swim. Uh, before I turn it over to Jan, I just want to bring everybody up to speed on this. This committee and this community board is 100% behind this, this, this motion, you know, but this, this, this ask. So we're right there with you. We've been on your, on your side all this while. We just got to get whoever's in city government to give the okay. Those are the people we got to get. To, to do the right thing. And with that, go ahead, Jan, you may, you may. I wanna turn it over to Bella, Bella. Okay, good enough. Bella, go ahead. Yes, hello, hi everybody. And it was nice meeting you today. Some of you at the groundbreaking, me, Henny and Rifki were there. And yes, I recognize some of your people. And anyway, now I guess everybody's sort of fed up with our agenda to get it to get more hours, but it's a fact that we need it. And here I have a nice lady next to me that she was also in the pool today. And as she ages, she, she feels that she needs the pool even more so. And so are other women. Everybody, some women have problems. So the feet and the neck and the shoulders and the hips and this is very um it's like an a must and in all we are we are only asking for another three hours on friday two hours and on monday an added hour and it seems such a little a small request and somehow it's so hard to break through and uh, we are at any given time the most congested um, session. I mean, mo most utilized. And um, some some of the hours that uh, people swim there are only like they have maybe 10, 15 people throughout the hour. We have about 
40, 50 women per hour, and uh, it's quite congested. And we need a Friday. The Friday is something like um, it makes it even three hour, three times a day, a uh, week. And I don't know why. It, really, I can't really figure out why. It shouldn't be granted to us after so many years asking. We always come up with some hardship. We always have problems. But now at this moment, um, things are settled. But we need, um, after COVID, there are some hours of reinstated, but we still need the two hours on Friday and one hour on Monday. So please, I'm begging you all, please uh, favor us tonight and the next meeting. And if anybody has a suggestion who we can approach, so finally it comes through, it comes about because um, because at this very moment, we don't have the two hours on Friday and another hour. Imagine on Monday, uh, so women arrive and it's only one hour. You can, can you imagine, can you imagine about at least 40 women come up and there's only one hour? So I was going to add to Bella, I'll add to your comment just to remind people that the women swim has gone back 30, 40 years. And the people that fought to save the pool were two groups, the women's swim group when it was going to be closed down and the, 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 uh, lap swimmers artists of, of, of Greenpoint who worked together to save the pool. So women always had eight hours, eight hours a week. And the Blasio took away, took away for we, which we cannot understand. We do not know why took away the fact because they tried to say it was a human rights violation, which we do not know what human rights violation it is or isn't. And a, another councilman in another district asked for an exemption. So either we're asking Phil for an exemption that goes from five hours, which de Blasio at one town hall meeting literally leaned over me, six foot four, leaned over and said, okay, I'll give you an hour. This is after all these women, hundreds of women have had this swim time for all these years and fought to save the pool. And in that pool, the lie that was perpetuated was that this was only Hasidic women, which I don't know why Hasidic women can't have swim time, but they happened to be Hasidic, Muslim, older, younger, ill women. We have women that really cannot do not want to and cannot swim with the lap swimmers and men. They need to have space. And we see that in the Waynesburg Greenpoint community, our senior center and everybody else, when we've had these dialogues, stop going. Older women stopped going to the pool years ago because there wasn't space and time. And people have, the last, the last point, just to, because there are some new people here, is that we had a million dialogues for over a year or two years, some of you were at that, about the issues. And we had, I mean, we really worked it out where in the end, every local politician and everybody but one person on the community board, then that now supported the hours for women swim. And we have been told, and Lincoln at Wrestler thought, and I thought he had gotten a win some, uh, what, two months ago, and then all of a sudden it was rescinded. And I'm telling you that I'm not exactly unable to organize or advocate. Um, and I do not, I honestly do not understand. And we have never been told why it oh. is that oh. this is happening. Yeah. And they use some word of equity and human rights, but we don't know who at human rights and equity and what we have to do. And we want to save the pool. So the end is, that Bella and all the women, they even wanted to use it in the summer when the pool was under way underutilized and they were not given the right to be able to use it when nobody else was using it. And this is why, Steve, I'm saying this issue about who gets to decide planning and use of any space. You know, why would we not want people that want to use it and have a hardship and health issues? We laid it out. That's why people sound so, you know, we sound so tired and maybe angry because it just uh, it just blows my mind. 
and Bella's mind and Hanny's mind and every other woman on the Women's History Committee of why it is that we cannot get three more lousy hours. And in reality, it would be nice if they had five, because if they could get two hours at night, people would really be happy. But, so out of 72 hours. All right, Jan, Jan, but the issue is, and I'm bringing it up, who can approve these hours? Right, right now, hours we're told, tonight, and Jennifer is here and Lincoln. Please, let, let, I, have a, let, let Lincoln I have a question okay. and a comment. Let, let, I have see, a question Lincoln, and a comment. One second, yeah. Lincoln, okay. let Lincoln come in. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to stay on for too long. My colleague, oh, Vanessa, yeah, is um, and I'm just at an event and, and I, that I'm emceeing, so they're going to call me back in in a second, so I apologize. Um, but Jen and I are, are tag team in this one together, as we always do on all the good things, on the bad things, I do them on my own. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, in all seriousness, this one has, I, it's one of the issues that my staff and I and Jen's team and her and her staff have spent more hours on than almost any other issue in our community. And it's incredibly frustrating because we're not asking for the sun, the moon, and the stars. We're right. asking for three more freaking hours right. of women's swim. It's a perfectly reasonable request. And in fact, Jen and I were able to get the Parks Department, thanks to the extraordinary advocacy of Jam and Bella and Penny and others, to put out a schedule this fall that included three more hours of women's only swim. But when the lawyers at the Parks Department heard about the change schedule, they said, you have to change it back. And they took away our three hours that we had advocated and fought so hard for. So we talked to the Parks Department commissioner and her team. They said, hey, we're open to this. We have concerns because, you know, whatever, but it has to go through the City uh, uh, Human Rights Commission's approval process. So we called the we reach out to the chair of the Human Rights Commission and we talk to the chair of the Human Rights Commission. They say, well, we can review this and approve it if the Parks Department formally requests it. Right. And the, we go back to the Parks Department. The Parks Department says, well, we can only formally request it if we're directed by City Hall to do so. So we've been going back and forth with the mayor's staff, asking for them to provide a clear, crisp uh, directive to the Parks Department to expand hours. Um, they have said, the, the staff at City Hall that, that Jen and I have spoken with have said that they're open to this. They're they're not opposed to this. Uh, there are some representatives who work for the mayor who are from the community in Williamsburg who are attuned to the issues. And we got where we're, I spoke again just about an hour ago to the Parks Department. They said they're trying to see if they can, you know, make some adjustments. Uh, they had gotten another letter requesting for an hour of additional swim for June, July, and August. So they're looking at that now. I think we need to keep our the pressure on the mayor's office to direct the Parks Department uh, to request from CCHR, the Human Rights Commission, the additional three hours of swim. Now, unfortunately, there was significant negative press attention you know, when this was all going down five or so years ago when I worked in the de Blasio administration. And I think that the lawyers at the Parks Department are still scarred from the New York Times editorial and the other negative attention that this issue received. Um, there's just no reason that they can't extend the hours if they want to. And the demand is clear. Uh, there are more people, there are more women utilizing the women only swim hours than the other hours in the pool, uh, which is why the program staff, you know, included it in their updated schedule for this past fall before the leadership of the Parks Department uh, overturned it. Um, but I think we need to keep the pressure on the mayor's office. We need to keep the pressure on the Parks Department to do right by our community, to heed our request, to heed our demand. Um, it is a reasonable one. And uh, we're gonna keep pushing until we get to make it happen. Um, even if it's incremental and Parks is willing to do a little bit now, we got to keep pushing to get fully what we need. Okay. Thank you, Lincoln. Appreciate your time. Before Absolutely. I talk, Jen, I mean, Jerry, can I talk make a little question? bit? Phil, can I'm I make going, a whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going Wait, to, can Jen speak? I'm going to let Jennifer talk and then we'll all, be, we'll all get a chance to say our piece. Go ahead, oh. Jen. Thank you so much, Phil, and good to see you again, and Jan, um, and, and um, Bella, I'm sorry I missed you this morning. I was at the event also, um, 
But uh, Councilmember Lincoln's been a great partner on this. He obviously knows the inner workings of City Hall a lot better, um, was really in tune to this with the de Blasio administration. So has been really, really helpful. The the pool is in my district um, and he's, he's, he's offered to help attend. So I just wanna thank him and his team for it. For helping because um, the information that that you all have truly is the information that I had as a staff member and as a member, which is, um, you know, a very kind of hazy timeline of someone filed a complaint against the Human Rights Commission saying that the act of excluding someone based on gender should be investigated by the Human Rights Commission, which is what they what they did, um, and and that really kind of started it. And I think to just echo what Councilmember Wrestler said, it was also just the negative press attention and. Um, you know, I don't think any administration wants to highlight or bring attention to something that, you know, could be deemed, um, I think, a little bit uh, problematic and um, all of that to say it's a cop out. It's an excuse, right? We know that in any administration, if they want to do the things, they will do the things. Um, I think if we're doing our part in making sure that it is fully staffed, um, because that is honestly the only logical thing that I, oh, the only justification that I think would make sense to me, right? If the hours are reduced because they just don't have the lifeguards and there is a national lifeguard shortage. That's not what's happening here. Uh, that's certainly not the feedback that we've gotten. Um, and so I think I think just to agree with Lincoln, we do have to keep the pressure on um, and we can think creatively about what that pressure looks like. But, you know, I think we have several people in leadership positions that, that think like this is not a big lift. Um, and so we just need to escalate this, make sure that um, if it's the mayor that has a final say, which he does, um, we need to make sure that this is getting to him um, because it feels like there's a lot of in-between talk between agency and city hall. Um, and we just need to make sure that it's it's being escalated um, to the mayor. And I know um, especially the, the women are not new to, to petitioning and, and showing up to these spaces. And maybe that's something that we need to do again. Um, but, um, but, but that, that, that's like, that's the update, which is, you know, we're with you. We also don't think it's an egregious ask. Um, it's just unfortunate, um, that, that they've really turned the women's health. Um, into a political issue, um, and by in turn, them trying to protect a category. They're very much. Excluding another category of a, a valuable community, uh, a piece of our community. Um, so I'll, I'll go on mute. I know there's some hands up. I will also say Abe Lugo from my office is here. Unfortunately, I have to have off uh, a little bit before 8:15 um, for a campaign thing. But but he is here throughout the duration, and I, I believe has been. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, so I I got a few people. I'm going to go in in sequence. Steve, you're first. Go ahead, Steve. Speak up. Thank you. Uh, first, a, a question and then a comment. Because just could recap what hours um, are available right now for women's swim, and then what time of day are you um, wanting the additional uh, three or five hours? Bella. Bella, what, oh, Bella, what are the hours right now? What what is yeah. the hours you have? Friday. Friday. Yeah. No, first what we have. Oh, you want to know the hours that we have now? Yes, right now. What are the hours you have right now? Steve wants uh, Monday, Monday, uh, one hour. Wednesday, two hours. In the morning. In the morning, both of them. Uh, Monday, it's nine to ten. Wednesday, it's nine to eleven. And what on and Friday? Sunday is no, the other no, one. No, it was taken away and nothing on Friday. Nothing on Friday, okay. And uh, I, I'd appreciate if you, you people, if you can uh, just read the, the page that I sent along to everybody today. It's a short one page and everything is stated on it. All uh, and very clear, no confusion. You can have a night hours too. I was confused by it. Hey, there's two hours. So and we have two hours, um, which... So. Uh, for children and their mothers on Monday af on Sunday afternoon from 1.30 to 3.30. However, we don't include, this is a separate thing that uh, a program for children. It's not for the women to swim, have their laps swim and, and swim and make exercises uh, they need. Okay, 
and we can we would include New that hours. was also you know we would be to be satisfactory because some women still work and they cannot uh, mm -hmm. they cannot it's very hard for them to come uh, during the day. You just wanted yes, to know what hours that you have right now. This lady wants to yeah, say a few words. Can I say a few words? Yeah, yeah but it's one of the people when, when the new hours that you're Everybody requesting. Everybody will get a chance to talk. Steve, okay. you got anything else that you want to mention? Well, that, that's I want to know question. when the the new hours that they're requesting. When are the uh, nine they... to eleven Friday and mm -hmm. Monday? Another hour. Now it's nine to ten. It should be nine oh, to eleven. Oh, Very easy. Every day from nine to eleven, at least. Okay. Thank you. And I'll just at quickly least. say, uh, uh, Jan, what's your the first support? Day? What's Oh, go ahead, Steve. You still you got more, what? Go ahead. We would prefer yeah, I just want to make it. Uh, one the, second. One second, oh, wait. everybody. Relax. Steve, go ahead. Thank you, Phil. Um, yeah, I just say the support from the board was overwhelming, but there there were three votes that one person okay. against and two abstained. All and right. I, I was one of the abstentions okay. oh. um, because there were. I mean, there was negative press, but there was just press from members of the community who question whether there is gender discrimination going on here, um, you know, with what's proposed. But I feel inevitably the board felt like it's happening during hours when there's almost, you know, very little or no use of the pool except by by women. So, um, so, so I feel like it's, you know, it's a, a significant issue that was brought up, you know, by you know, group, there were a group of women and there were others just about the constitutionality. And I remember Tom Burroughs spoke very passionately about how pools were sites for discrimination for LGBT, for, for people of color. So it just it kind of touches a nerve. So I feel like we just got to just have our heads screwed on the right way and um, approach this, you know, and I feel like um, I remember the, I saw a quote from the Human Rights Commission saying, you know, when some of the hours were re reinstated, a balance between the community needs and just considering, you know, the access issue. So I feel like that's, I feel like if that, um, you know, just we continue to su support that idea, then I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. So thank you. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm going to put your first name. So Mr. Raw, what's your, did you say your first name? You're, you're muted. You're Mute. muted. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. What is that? You there? Speak. You're still mute. You're still you muted. Hear. Come on. He's probably going to have to uh, log down, log in because he's unmuted. I see okay. it. It's not. Mary, Mary O'Donnell, did you want to say something? I do. Go ahead, Mary. Are you in third, and then I'm going to go back to Bella. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think that I heard Jen Gutierrez say that uh, the pool is in her district. Can it, can somebody confirm that? Because I haven't. Seen She's right there. Yes. I think she did. Hey, Mary. It is. is there? Yes. Hey, Mary. Okay. Hi. So my suggestion would be maybe to try to reach out to a powerful women's group like now national organization of women and you can take the lead on on that and oh yes we have a friend there now the president of the new Ch new york chapter is con ex congresswoman carolyn maloney oh wow so okay you might, you might get um yeah that's a good if, idea yeah, if you take the lead on that, you might be able to get something done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, that's good advice. I think okay. that we try to do that. If I, I mean, I, it's my timeline is fuzzy, but I feel like we tried. But obviously, now with with a friend, at now maybe things could 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 change a little bit. So thank you for that. Yeah, and if you know two women together, you can't lose. You know. <laughs> we have a lot of women, Mary, that are supporting this issue. Um, yeah, Bella, go ahead, that's Bella. perfect. I'm gonna go back in Bella's court for a minute. Perfect for right, Jen Bella. to take the lead on it. You want to talk? So, yes. Oh, can I say? Can I tell? Bella, yes, you're right. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's worth while to mention again that uh, just bef before this pool was renovated, 
some real estate tycoons were go wanted to snatch away the building. So we wouldn't have a pool and you wouldn't have a pool and anybody on this uh, spree now and the entire neighborhood would have no pool. And it was just a few women, that, uh, some of them are not alive anymore, that were went protesting so to save this building. So now maybe this is going to make a dent in the way people think. Yes, women from our community saved, helped save this building. So, um, from what I, from what I understand, I'm getting from our council people, we have to keep pressure on City Hall because Jennifer is that basically the the top of the top where we should be giving most pressure right now. I think so, and um, yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I just want to address what Steve brought up. Um, absolutely about the inclusivity piece. Um, to be fair, I've never. I'm with you. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're not excluding anyone that identifies um, as a woman or a trans woman. But I also don't think that that's that that's ever happened at the Metropolitan Pool. I think the decision yeah. has been made around a fear, um, and and that's something that's certainly something that that we we can address. But yeah, Phil, to your to your point, um, that's a lot of the feedback that we've gotten. And like and like Lincoln said, he's been he's he's honestly been doing a lot of that kind of background work with City Hall, um, and so that's exactly what what's going on right now. Eileen, do you want to? I just want to ask. I do. Really quick. I, so I just wanted to those of you who don't know me. My name is Eileen Dalton. I'm the chief of recreation for Brooklyn. So I've been working like with Bella for a really long time. Um, I oversee all the rec centers in Brooklyn. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of kind of where we are at this moment. Good. Metro good. currently has 4,400 members that belong to the pool. We have 72 hours a week available to program the pool. That includes the swim for life program, which, you know, we provide um, free swimming instruction to second graders throughout the city. Met pool is a big piece of that. We do an adaptive swim program, water polo, lap swim, et cetera. There's a lot of programs. So for us, it's really always been a matter of trying to balance the needs of the entire membership pool. Obviously, the women have always been a, an integral part of that, and Henny and Bella and I know, you know, we we talk about this all the time. But just so you guys kind of understand, in addition, we also did just receive a petition from the lap swimmers. Um, I don't know if that got to the board, but that did get to my office, um, asking us to not change it. So there are constituencies on both sides, and there's a long history, Councilwoman. If you're ever interested, I can give you. I've been in Brooklyn for 19 years, so. I've been through the gamut on this. So I could give you a little bit of the back story. Um, not now, it's a lot. But just so you guys kind of all understand, like it's not about wanting to be, you know, exclusive or not, you know, give the women more time. I would love to have more time in the schedule to give everyone more time. The water polo people call me once a week because they only have one day a week. So it's it's a tough thing to manage. Um, we do also still offer a women's swim session at St. John's in Crown Heights. Um, we don't guarantee a female lifeguard at that session because in the parks department we don't um typically offer gender specific programming all of our programming is as you know gender inclusive as possible so those are like the two programs we've held on to we want to continue to be able to serve the community in that way as a woman i you know totally understand it but just so that everyone here kind of understands the broader context it's not about not wanting to do it's about trying to do for the entire membership of 4,400 people. So we kind of have to kind of balance that out. Thank you. Thank you for that. Go ahead, Jan. No, I'm going to say is that the truth is, I mean, people are really, I don't know who these people are that signed the petition because we had open hearings for over a year with huge amount of people, lap swimmers, trans people, gay people, everybody, and had this discussion in depth. So when somebody all of a sudden says, oh, we got a new flyer. And I heard, by the way, we've already heard that there's somebody was running around knowing we were having this meeting tonight, getting people to sign a petition that they were complaining about. What is this all about? Right, Bella? I mean, it's like, now it's getting ridiculous because the fact is the original letter that went to the parks department was done was done where people thought because we are forgetting this minor word we're in a community that is try has great diversity 
We have worked very hard. I'm very proud to be in a community that people have worked across race, class, ethnic lines and class so well that we have been able to mitigate a lot of problems. But the original issue was that people thought that the ascetic community, because they saw the women dress different, look different, were in the pool. And we've had meetings on all of this where people came out and they said they wore different suits, they had this, they had that. People thought that they were getting a special situation. And in Williamsburg, it's been highly sensitive in battles that we've had locally, or people thought that the Aceta community may be getting extra special conditions. But the fact was, it was never just the Aceta community. It was Muslim, everybody is there. And so all the women that have worked, and when you talk about Mary said, we gotta have now, now is not here in Brooklyn. National Congress of Neighborhood Women is here. Hundreds of women have been involved and stood behind this battle around women's swim. Italian, Polish, we've all been together. I mean, I don't know where you've been. Lincoln was at these meetings. Jennifer has been at these meetings. We had huge amount of people. Hundreds of Hasidic women who are not used to going out to fight for battles. And that, so it was never, it's really about, does this commit to me, does this community really want to the fact that we are a diverse community? Women are diverse and we have special needs and we are 51% of the population. We are not just some group of water polo people. We are 51% and people have asked this now for three or four years. This is a really a travesty and people have been treated often very badly and they don't say it. Bella's not saying it, Annie's not saying it, I've seen it. So I think Jen has said and Lincoln has said, we should, and it's the mayor now, I heard, but I don't know why, because the mayor supported, the same mayor supported this issue in the past, unless I got that wrong, I thought that he did support it. So I'm just saying I, I agree with Phil's approach that we have to stand behind so many people, and they're all paying, I want to remind you, they're all paying the full fee. People are paying the money to the Parks Department, but they can only go in five hours a week with hundreds and hundreds of women who are paying this fee. So there is something really wrong here if we can't stand behind the diversity of our own neighborhood and to stand up for women, and not just some women, all women, you know, this is really all. We're all on. We're all with you, Jan. We're Thank you, Phil. Right now, Jan, we're hundred percent. So, are you, well, are you really unmuted? No, that. you're still muted. Am I? Can you hear me now? There you go. Now I we think can you, hear you. Uh, you can got, you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Rastislav Rar. I go by Slava. Uh, Jan, thank you for educating me on this issue earlier. Um, I wish I had uh, learned from you about how to use technology as well, because then I would have been able to speak earlier. Um, so I'm here on behalf of Rabbi uh, David Niederman. He asked, mm -hmm. he uh, cares deeply about this issue. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. So he asked me to uh, make a statement on his behalf. Sure. Um, so at, at its heart, this issue for us is an issue of furthering human welfare. We believe that swimming is unique because it is a low impact activity, which promotes health. It has huge health benefits, everything from sweet, uh, sleep quality to longevity to stress management. And it's in all of our interest to make sure that those benefits, those health benefits are widely distributed. But uh, for many women from all walks of life who can't swim with men or don't want to swim with men, uh, these benefits are not available and access is denied. So if we compare two groups of swimmers, uh, one, the adult lap swimmers and the other, the women's swim group, Adult lap swimmers get 45 hours of swimming time every week, whereas uh, the women's group gets only five hours. That means that an adult lap swimmer can swim before they go to work. They can swim during their lunch break. They can swim after they leave work or they can swim before they go to bed. However, uh, on a Monday, uh, a woman who doesn't want to or can't swim with men only can swim between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. So if she has kids at home, that she has to take care of between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. She can't swim. If she has to work between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., she can't swim. Or if she's elderly or, or an older woman, and for some reason um, she doesn't have the transportation to get to the pool 
or her caregiver or someone who has to take her there isn't available between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., that woman also cannot swim on a Monday. So this is what this issue for us is about. It's about access. It's about, um, it's about doing the humanitarian thing. It's about doing the just thing. Uh, so thank you for uh, inviting me here, Phil, and thank you for allowing me to make the statement. Thank you very much. Very, thank you very much. Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to make a motion. I think you have to send a letter directly to city hall and to the mayor's office and tell him this is what this community wants. They want these extra hours and they want them now. So would, is, is that what my committee members does, is that sound all right to everybody? Well, I would say, the, I think Carol speaking for the entire community, I feel like, um, or the, oh, okay, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, like the yeah, board, this, the board, well, the this board, committee, the board, I'll, I'll put, I'll put yeah. it on this committee and then this committee will go be, see if the community board, see what, what, what our board says to that. Phil, this is Simon. I said something. Yes, yeah, Simon. What? Go ahead, Simon. You know, I just, I, I'm just, I'm here today, um, fully support with these issues, and I, I look at from a, from a, uh, you know, a, um, basically the, the hours are there. The, the women's swim is there. They're having the hours. The only ask it should be make normal. One hour is is, uh, is zilch. We only asking for one extra hour. I mean, this makes sense. No, we're not asking. So for I, one. I, Simon, we're asking for I mean, one hour per day. One hour per day. I'm saying. I'm not saying. Oh, well, that we're not saying only three five, extra five, hours. Three five, extra five, hours, five, which five, makes five. sense. Okay. Anyway, yeah. so I, I support your motion. Yes. I feel. Yeah. Well, yeah. I need a, a board. I, I want my board member, my, my committee members, to see what they say first. I, I, I have a voting power, just for the record. Okay. <laughs> three, but we can't ask them to extend the exemption. Legally, the lawyer here, Bill, I think the question would be, should we ask them to extend the exemption, which is right now five hours to eight hours? We're extending something that people have already agreed that we can have an exemption. I personally disagree that there should be an exemption for women to have space, but that's me. So mm -hmm. I'm saying is the easiest thing, lawyer wise or Phil, to just ask them to ex expand the extension to eight hours. Well, I'm, I'm trying to go off what Lincoln said. What Lincoln says, we, we take a little at a time and we try to get a little every, every you know, before we can right off a big chunk right off the bat. But if someone wants to make some motion to go to City Hall, I, I'll entertain you. do want to go to City Hall because both Jen and Lincoln have all said it's the mayor. Mm -hmm. It was the mayor with the Blasio. It's now the mayor with Eric Adams, which is very sad to see. And with no reason, Steve. I mean that I'm just saying when you talk about wanting reasons, let's we don't have a reason. We've never been given it. You just want to leave it like this. We'll leave it like this right now. Well, I mean, I would, I would say just maybe adjust your original motion to saying, you know, the um, you know, the re request that the city. Uh, you know, the parks department extend the uh, the waiver three hours to meet the the needs of the, yes, the community. That's what I that's what I want to that's what I think women's women swim. Yeah. That the three hours that they get yes. Okay. All in favor of that motion? You want to talk? Aye. Any members? Aye. Aye. I vote no. Anybody objecting? And any abstention? Okay, so I have a full board on. Okay, okay, that's good. So we have a we have a a motion, and we'll send the letter to City Hall asking for those three extra hours. Thank you, Phil. Thank okay, you, everybody. Thank you. Good meeting. Thank you all for coming. We got a we got a quorum. We got a good day today. So stay well, stay healthy, keep swimming. You did a great job sharing. <laughs> and, and pick up the sport, pickleball. It's good for you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you all very we'll much. We'll teach you. We'll teach you.
Ja, ja. Ja, wat ja, ja. 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 Ja,